And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, hello and welcome back to the Weighing In Podcast. We have got all kinds of things to talk about. There's a couple of fights that are coming up this weekend. We got the UFC from, I believe, the Apex Center. We've got one FC. And we've got some fights that are supposedly now booked that we need to talk about. My man is sitting there with his beautiful black, pink. I don't even know whether what colors are on that sucker, but that is a beautiful it. shirt. Rainbow Miami Nation Vice, baby. there, mister. You know that. No, Miami, Miami Vice. Vice. <laughs> this is the Bellator Fort Lauderdale shirt that we had, and it was fire, man. Under a black light, whoo, it it's fire. fire. Straight fire. Got it. Yeah, we've got, got I guess, uh, the UFC this weekend's got some title implications. Holly Holm with the the exit of Amanda Nunes. Now, I guess with a win like uh, win over Silva, may potentially end up getting a title shot for the vacant title. Good for her. 42, for I her. believe, 42 years old. Good for her. Yeah, so let's uh, let's see if she can get it done. You know, I've as of lately, I've said you know some things in terms of with her. She has slowed down a little bit, but she's still pretty fast. And uh, what she is is a veteran of the game, not just in MMA, but in kickboxing, boxing, all of these things. She knows how to win. She's a fucking proven winner. She's a former UFC champ. She knows how to get it done. So I'm looking forward to talking more about that fight and uh, moving on. And what she what's next for her if, it, if she does get it done? Ah, uh, John. It's been a little uh, beautiful over here in Texas, my man. It's been nice. It's beautiful. It's been the nice. weather's nice. Take, a, Everything's take a, nice. a look at my face. Do you notice that my face matches my shirt? That's how damn hot it is here. <laughs> <laughs> I've been outside all day long, man. I love hot. it. Hot, hot, I love hot. it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of news to talk about, too. There's a little bit of beefs going on. I guess there's some comments that I said in the last show that we'll touch on a little bit. Oh, um, you're such I a guess mouthy you can tell. dude. I know. Some people were just a little <laughs> triggered and offended in the comment section. Uh, someone you know, triggered? Look, I, I, oh, I feel bad. I just I just decided to to stop. Like, I mean, I, I still read them. I just don't reply to them as, anymore. I kind of like, because it's getting nasty down there, man. And people were telling me the, the, the YouTube comment section is the worst. We had a very positive one for, I mean, a couple of years. But I can tell, like, I don't know if it's because COVID ended and now people are just filling their oats. Times are a change. You know? <laughs> yeah, they went from like being, we were probably the only communication they had. So they felt like they had to respect <laughs> us because then we would be mad and just not do a show and they wouldn't have no one to rely on. But now wow. they're out there making friends and they feel a lot more confident about themselves. So now they're just in, in our <laughs> comment section talking shit. No. Um, Last show was pretty split though, I would say. Last oh, show was wasn't like. That show was pretty split, and it was all based around this Eze Drikas stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, the last show, no, it was hundred percent. So funny is that people that were bagging on me were talking about, "I wonder what you're talking about." But then in the in the same comment, like one comment below was a guy going, "I agree with Josh." So it was like split fifty yeah. fifty. Everyone this and that, but we you know we'll we'll talk. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay. Uh, and what my comments were, and we'll talk about Josh. Also, too, you cannot stuff, have an opinion. Stuff. Oh, I'm gonna. You are not allowed to have an opinion. I know. You know, no, no, That's no, no. You about. cannot have your own opinion. That is what you cannot this voice is your opinion. About. It's fucking crazy. You know what's crazy, right? Is that um, it's funny when you have some people will listen to some media sources and they'll take their opinion as fact, even though they've never trained, they've never worked out, they've never put anything out there, you know, in terms of the training. Look, at least like Elon and Zuck and those guys are actually training. But other media, some media yeah. sources, not, and I know everyone's going to go to one person. And I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about all the ones that don't train. Okay. And so, including him. Including yeah, him. yeah, including him. But, but I'm simply saying, like, look, it's like yeah. you're going to go, like, oh, you're talking. No, I'm not. I'm talking about all of them. Is that they've got to make some changes. They've got to make some adjustments and uh, be better. All right. We'll talk more about it. It's just my opinion, though. Just my opinion. <laughs> um, but let's go ahead and let's, let's talk into this fight. Before we get started, go to OnlyFans.com and subscribe to us there. OnlyFans.com slash Wayne and subscribe to us over there. It is free. And uh, like I said, John and I are the first podcast that they've ever sponsored ever. OnlyFans, we are the first podcast they have ever sponsored. And we're here to bring in some new um, some new subscribers, but subscribers in the sports division. That's what they're looking to do. So we're, they're trying to get away Hold from on, you the... Say they, they, did, they didn't get us because we're sexy? They, Nah, well, you know, they, I mean, they did yeah. probably get me because I'm sexy. You, a little okay. bit of a stretch. So just, I just little wanted to make bit. sure that you would definitely, you know, you're going to hang on to that. 
bullshit. I am. I'm going to hang on to it as long as I can, man. I still have a little bit of a hairline. It's kind of slowing to starting to fade a little bit. But and, you know, and my teeth, you know, are getting a little bit more spread out because I don't wear my Invisalign. So I need to get back on that. And uh, the grays are coming through. Line. I used to. Yeah. John, if you don't oh, remember no my shit. first fight in the UFC, my first couple of fights in the UFC in 2001, 2000, whatever it was, uh, I had a big gap in my teeth. So I went and got it fixed. Yeah, I got Invisalign, did the whole thing, and yeah, it was great. And then I lo- and then I broke it one time, and then I went back and got the new tray, and then never used it really. <laughs> so I'm like, shit, I gotta go back to do- I gotta go back and get it done. But uh, yeah, I know, I know. Uh, but there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of news, a lot of fight announcements. I'm happy for. There's gonna be some big ones. A lot of fight announcements. And, and especially the big the big heavyweights getting after it, getting Those after it. Big the big heavyweights, heavyweights. not just yep. John Jones and Stipe. We're talking about. Boxing. Tyson Fury Tyson. and Francis Ngannou. They're ever, gonna look, box it up. Everyone thought he fumbled the bag, but apparently he didn't, because this is the biggest Obviously, name he could have potentially fought. has got a little more Velcro than everyone yeah. thought. <laughs> Are you it's gonna stop there? It's got a little heavier too. It's got a little heavier too. No, no. Let's uh, let's uh. Do you want to start with that, Dave, or do you want to start with the uh with the uh? UFC? I, I have UFC. Up He's the got the here, UFC so. up on the board, so let's do. We we've let's got go. Holly Holm. Taking on Myra Bueno Silva. It's a good matchup, especially now at this point in their careers. They match up very well. It's uh, from the UFC Apex in Las Vegas, so there will be no crowd at all. Nothing to cheer anybody on. Now, there might be cheer like 15, 20 really. people in there, John. There are about yeah, 15, 20 people. Like, come, come on. on. It, it's, it's one of those, you know, the whole COVID era was kind of like, ah, it's kind of cool because people can hear stuff now and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's dead. Stop. You know, it's nice to have fans. It's nice to have the, the, the crowd that gets behind the fighters and stuff. Like when you, I, okay, think about it. You just had like Brandon Moreno against Pantoja. What a fight, right? Mm. And the fans were so into it and going crazy. And that helps make that fight. The fans in certain fights elevate it to the next level. You can never have that. This could be a great fight. It could be a great fight. It takes the fans to help elevate that fight to the to that upper level, and Moreno and Pantoja had that had that fight. The fans did their job. It elevated to that big level, mm-hmm. and this is what's wrong with the Apex: is you never get that there. You had, John, you've had really good you. fights. Look, I agree with you, but then I also want to. I look at it on the business side. This side of the this side of the business, they've found a way to make it work and still make money. They're hitting their quota in terms of how many shows they have to do for ESPN. I'm not There's saying really... anything about their business, Mark. Yep. No, I but, get it. But, like, but would we have I would gotten really the same? rather see the UFC going to smaller markets, places that don't have professional sports, places that, you know what, it's a special moment when the UFC comes to town. I think they've given that up you know, in a lot of ways. You know, I'm, I'm being honest. PFL, Bellator, they've all fucking fumbled the fucking ball because the UFC handed them by going by stick sticking with the apex they handed other promotions the ability to have the ability to go to those towns put on great shows have people want to come back and know they fumbled the ball right along with them no well what it is right is that we've noticed in Bellator we've noticed an uptick in people coming to to the events Seattle was sold out <clears throat> uh Dublin almost always sells out you know France was sold out Italy was sold out you know I mean obviously Sioux Falls is a very small venue but still sells out it's like they they're selling out more often you want to know why because the UFC is not doing all their small shows um around around the places. US or around the world That's it. yeah so they're not going places so then they people want to see the events live and I agree with you John um <clears throat> That is something that, whether it's PFL, whether it's one, whether it's Bellator, they need to be more active in having more shows. Not all of them. And not only just to have more shows um, to help generate more fans, to basically to acquire new fans and spark their interest and get them into it. But like you said, the UFC is giving them, has given them an opportunity to, um, to go ahead and go them. out there and hand it to them. And they, I wouldn't say they fumbled the bag because... <clears throat> uh, Bellator's done a couple different shows outside. Like Seattle was a new show, you know, coming to Sioux Falls and making it kind of a mainstay now the last two years has been a, a big yeah. deal. Um, but yeah, you definitely need to start hitting some newer markets. You know, Chicago was sold out as well. 
Um, but you can't continue to keep going back. We went to Phoenix. Phoenix did really well. The first show, second show, you went back too soon. It, you know what it is. And But here's the thing. I was just having a couple conversations with some managers is that I really think that that the, the ticket selling portion of it all is a little overrated. And as much as I, I, as in terms of a business model now with the new, with the way that things are broken down, if you have a TV deal and you just need to produce content because content is key when it comes to whether it's on a streaming uh, app or when it's on a streaming service or for a major network, they just want the, they just want the content. Everything goes to ESPN plus, you know, everything goes, everything should be going to either Paramount or going to CBS uh, app, ECBS sports or whatever it is app. They should be going to those locations. The more content you have, the better. So having to go out there and sell tickets, it sucks for the fans. I mean, it sucks for the promotion because if they don't, they can't generate the money, but they don't need to if they're just already getting paid from the, from the apps or from the streaming services. So what, what happens is you're not, you're not actually acquiring new fans, but you're still me, you're still making money because it's not costing you anything to really have the event. But you can look, okay, the PFL, being in Atlanta, they were in Atlanta like three weeks in a row. They actually had good crowds, but you know, and talking to people, there, they were the. It was what they called being papered, meaning they were giving out tickets. They weren't selling. Yeah, tickets. yeah. They were giving the tickets out. Okay, and that's fine. They can do that, and that's part of what you're mm-hmm. saying. You know, if you go to a Bellator show, you ain't getting no free tickets. Scott Coker doesn't give away free tickets. <laughs> that ain't happening, I fought for man. Scott Coker for years, man. He ain't giving no free tickets he ain't away. Giving no free tickets. None. That man is a promoter None. to death. He says we, uh, we sell tickets, you know. So, but uh, you know, it, it, it's. I think that he considers you know, he considers it stealing from the company when he gives away free tickets. He considers yeah, it stealing right. from the company. And I'm like, he's like, look, this, this, we're running a business here. And I'm like, I get it. I understand. Uh, but I think, I think something is to be said that it costs a lot of money to put a show on. And I know you make, yeah, you know, in the UFC and in Bellator, the last UFC couple is times, making money. They're Come making on, let's be money. I don't care where they're going. They're selling tickets. They don't, they uh-huh. don't paper the seats. You know, yeah. obviously they give out, you know, cop tickets to uh, celebrities and things like that, but. They're selling, you know, out arena after arena after arena. They don't have it. It's all, it's one of those where, look, this is just easier. This is our hometown. We're here. It's like having a home game. We don't have to, you know, have our stuff flown everywhere. We've got the cage set up. Everything is there. I understand it's an easier setup. But for the fighters themselves, for the most part, it's always better to fight in front of a crowd. No. Especially when, well, when me, you've been that you fighter, that level of fighter, like Holly Holm is. Yeah. Let me give you an example. That fight uh, between Hooker and Tarantula. Oh, God. Oh, Jalen Turner. Uh, what's I said yeah, Jalen Turner. Turner. That, <clears throat> I, I heard you. you <laughs> I was agreeing. You're still doing it. I feel like there's a delay on your mic. A jut. No, no. I think I think there's a delay. You have a delay or something going on because I feel like you're always a second behind me. I'm not sure if it's your age because you're Joe Biden now, but <laughs> I'm just trying to figure it out, buddy. Like you're you're getting borderline weekend at Bernie's with wow. me, bud. Like it's, it's wow, fucking, borderline Joe Biden, Biden, man. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wait. Hold on. We're, we're hold on. Hold on. Those are fighting <laughs> words. <laughs> I just can't with you. But we would have never it. have gotten the Dan Hooker and Jalen Turner fight. I don't look, he broke his orbital, his jaw looked like it's more of his orbital oh, yeah. slash jaw, like up in the he broke that plus his arm his right above bone. his wrist. He broke, yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, we would if that crowd hadn't powered him through and the fucking big yeah. balls he has, we would have never got that fight. If it's if it's if it's not as noisy and as exciting and his adrenaline going with the electric. crowd behind him because he electric exactly good word there john thanks for saving me. thank you very much um but See? if if it's not that feeling then the pain sets in a lot more the wrist you hurts feel it. the face hurts you feel things a lot more when you get hurt at the gym it's like the adrenaline goes until all of a sudden you stop you're like oh shit he went the whole fight yeah. That that lets you know right there that the crowd pushed him through. Not in his no balls. No doubt about it. But he he's yeah. he's an animal, man. He's an absolute animal. And I'm going to throw a little bit more on there. Is that he got he got really disrespected. 
He didn't get a bonus for that fight. Are you shitting me? No, he, the three he bonuses bonus. went to Gomez. I mean, maybe he did a back, a back locker room bonus, or maybe they sent him Who's one. The, but go, remember the girl that knocked out yeah, uh, the Denise other girl, Gomes. like uh, yeah, Gomes. Denise Gomes. Gomes. Yeah, she, she got she got the she got a bonus. Uh, uh, the co-main Moreno and uh, and okay. Petosia, they got the bonus, and of course Volk got the bonus. So three kiss, uh, Gomez. That Gomez, Petosia, Gomes. Brandon Moreno. Yeah. Gomes. Well, yep, that's it. I'll yeah. give oh, sorry, it Petosia, Volk, Brandon it was, uh, Moreno deserve, but Jalen Turner and Dan Hooker definitely deserved a mm. bonus, a lot oh. more than. And it was a nice, a nice, quick fight for Gomes, but. Yeah. One was I mean, a war. I'm, I mean, I would, I would hope, and I would imagine they they buttered his bread a little bit in the back, or they they're gonna send him a oh, check yeah. in the mail. You know, there was a lot like when I was when I was with them, I didn't get a check in the back, but you got a check when you got home. And that was kind of nice. So it always helps, especially when you when you fight like that. I mean, if if I'm if I'm back in my office, if I'm Dana White and I'm back in my office, I'm thinking to myself, wow, I just got the results. You got a broken arm and a broken arm. And- <sighs> Man, let's give this guy. Let's give, and he won. And he won. And it, yeah. was, it was fucking barn burner from beginning to end. I'm Fuck like, all right, you know, what? let me write this kid a check myself. <laughs> shit i would have made sure i gave him a call and said hey there's a check in the mail i won't let you know buddy i won't let you know we appreciate you good shit because he's gonna be out for a while that broken orbital and that and that arm is gonna be out for a little bit he's gonna be out for a minute so all right well, well hold hey, on we got you got off track talking about that home. fight hold on hold on you were talking about that fight so now i've got to go and i've got to answer this because i hate when oh, people geez. write write talking things wrong you. but you no know, nah, they're, they're not talking shit to me it's just that you know, I get this all the time, this kind of thing, where Pat, Pat O, who is at Pat KK151515 on Twitter. Listen, if you're gonna if you're gonna text me and say that Adelaide Bird should be fired for scoring round three for Dan Hooker. <laughs> Adelaide what? Bird did not score it for Dan Hooker. The <laughs> other two judges did. Okay. And that's why he got the win. So I understand what you're saying. But if you're gonna write me a thing. You got to say what happened. And she did not. And that was a mistake. She should have. She gave way too much credit to elbows from underneath. And me and Josh talked about that. But God damn, people, if you're going to, if you're going to bag on someone, make sure that you bag on them with the correct words. So, so wait, he's mad because Dan Hooker won the third round. That's what it sounds like, but I don't think that's what he means. He was trying to I say hope that not, because. No, he won. Dan that Hooker third did round. win the third round. He yes, won the third he round. He won the second and the Absolutely. third. Absolutely, he lost second the first. The third. Hello, he lost the first and he won the second and third. I, I don't understand what Absolutely. the argument is. It, there is no argument. That's that my fight. whole point. If you're gonna bag on someone, make sure that yes. you at least can create a sentence that makes it so your bagging is correct. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. Ah, uh, man, there's so many things we could talk about. Look, I just think that it was a great, it was a great weekend of fights. And like I said, we talked about the nine and a half. I give it a nine and a half, nine, nine and a half. Yeah. Yeah. And I told people why. And, uh, you know, but overall it was a great fight, man. I thought that fight was great. The Pantoja and Moreno fight was great. Um, you know, the main event was seemed to be a little one-sided, but looked like, uh, Pan, uh, looked like, um, <clears throat> yeah, year was coming on and just what it just got clipped got clips man i'm so mad i didn't bet on him for to, to volk to win in the third i should have listened to john buddy it's gonna be very rare right, you bro. guys you guys hear me say that yeah because this guy I'm, I'm always having to i'm always having to talk myself oh. off a cliff hanging out with john so it's like it's rare that i didn't man if you would listen to, to me more life credit. would be so easy for you Please. instead you go off of what <laughs> you think is right and yeah. failure is a common denominator yeah. in all those decisions just listen to John, me. should I read the text when I sent you my bets? And you said, please tell me you didn't bet those. And I won $600, John. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, hold on. Hold thank on. Thank God I hold didn't on. listen to you. <laughs> why? No, why did I say that? Because there was so many of them. <laughs> yes, that's like, true. This is true. There please was. tell me you didn't bet all those. <laughs> no, no, I did. I bet them all. I <laughs> know. Uh, I was like, oh, uh, Jesus. All right, let's get into Holly Holm and uh, Bueno Silva. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> I, you know, I... Like experience, knowledge, everything goes towards Holly Holm. But mm-hmm. I'm going to say that, you know, Bueno Silva is, she's a good athlete. She's faster than Holly now. 
Uh, her stand-up is actually good. It's the movement of Holly has always been a problem for a lot of people. I'm not saying that it's not going to be a problem for Silva, but Silva does crack and she cracks well. She's got a good ground game. Holly now has a good ground game, and you will see Holly Holmes in this fight taking the fight to the ground. She will work to be in the top position. She will work to be on the ground with Bueno Silva. That's where she's going to want to be because on the feet, she's going to be a little bit slower than Bueno Silva, and she's going to take that speed element out of the equation. You're going to see her taking the fight to the ground, and I would say that Holly is probably the favorite in this, but it is five rounds, and she's always in shape, and that's one of the reasons that I say she'd be the favorite because she's in phenomenal shape. She can go the five rounds. We've seen her do that. And I have not seen Silva go into that fourth and fifth round ever. I'm going to agree with you partially. Except I think that I think that Holly Holm will take this fight to the to the ground, but I don't think she'll do it till probably later in the second or into the third. I think that she's going to press her to the fence, clinch her, grime, be, make it. Remember how she fought uh, Cyborg? She's going to fight her that way. She had success against Cyborg, pressing Cyborg to the sure. fence, kneeing, elbowing, yeah, clinching she, with her. She took she took a page out of Cyborg's book. Mm-hmm. And and that's Cyborg, how Cyborg and, fights, and that's exactly how Cyborg fights. And she was actually beating her in some in a lot of those positions. Holly Holm was, and when I look at Holly, and I think to myself, she's making those adjustments that Andre Arlovsky's been making. He's made those mm-hmm. adjustments to make his career last longer. Close the distance. Don't stay on the outside. Don't get beat by the speed. Press Don't you get into the, the firefight. Don't get into the firefight. Yeah, if I have to take you to the ground, take you to the ground, get my work in, and then maybe back back out, back out, and then get back on you and don't give you any space to get to get going. She want like I said earlier, she's a winner through and through, Holly Holm is. She yeah. finds ways to win, and that's what she does. That's why she's been a champion everywhere she's ever been. She's a fantastic fighter, and her fight IQ is probably second to none, better than almost anyone's. So I'm looking at her going. In this fight, especially if it drags into, like you're saying, the fourth and fifth round, it's going to be all Holly, all Holly after that. The way she fights, the way she's going to hang on uh, Silva, the way she's going to make her work in those clinches, and then she's going to make her get back up, hang on her head, all of those things. I think the the experience and the fight IQ of Holly is going to be a key factor. Outside of getting clipped coming in, I think Holly, this is Holly's fight to lose. Yep, I agree. Absolutely. We got Albert Duryev against Joan Jung Park. Very tough person who we've watched multiple times that's a good fight but let's let's just go down the list here walt harris taking on josh parisian you, know, you take a look at that heavyweight matchup walt harris better athlete you know just a guy who you know he's just never gotten past that one point he gets to that upper level and then things you know kind of fell off for him but that's a good fight for him against josh parisian is there any other ones on here that you look at and go that's a fight people need to watch there's a lot of female fights on this card. Yes, One, there two, is. Three, there is a lot of female fights on this card. I actually want to see Terrence McKinney. I think Terrence McKinney is he's still young, very explosive. Uh, he's got to he's got to learn not to watch. To, not to exert all that energy in the first round. Learn how to pace yourself. Learn and understand that, that. Don't look for the knockout. I know you've had success with your knockouts. Don't go chasing them. They will come. Your athleticism, your ability, all of those things that you bring to the table, it'll come. But he's got his hands full with Nazim. Nazim's tough, good, good on the feet, good on the ground, good all the way around, good against the clinch. So I think he's going to, I look for Nazim to probably get Terrence to the fence, try to slow him down in that first round and then maybe take him apart from there if he can. But I think up until that, that second round, it's going to be a fun fight. Um, as I'm going down this card here, dun, dun, dun. I mean, John, let's be honest. The UFC has been famous for this the last two years. After a, a good pay-per-view, what do they do? That's they a, give you the shittiest yeah. fucking card you could possibly think of. Well, you got to give people saying, fights. Let's put a positive spin mm-hmm. on it, Josh. I, I know what just, I'm saying, though, is look, this, look, these are the fights, though. Like, we're going we're gonna to watch them all. I'm going to watch them all. But I'm saying, though, these are the fights, though, where you get those, you get those um, fight of the year candidates. Potential fight of year, fight of the year candidates. They're going to come out and they're going to, they have nothing to lose. They're going to come out and try to stake their claim and show people that they belong in that division and that there's someone to be reckoned with. So good luck to all of them. But, um, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of no name, like just people that are trying to make their names. So good luck for them. And, uh, let's go. Tyson Nam, good fighter as well. Evan Elder, good fighter. Um, true, true. 
Let me see who else on this card. Ashley Evan Smith. Dum dum dum. She's opening the card uh, against Perez. Should be good. Uh, what else? Anything else there on there, John? John John's John's always doing this to us, man. It's like uh, it's like he likes to toy with us a little bit there, Dave. Uh, Sometimes uh. he'll put his his microphone on silent and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, you know, that's hashtag farm life. We gotta get him a T-shirt that says hashtag farm life because uh, it seems like yeah. that's seems like that's what's uh, causing all these problems these days. <clears throat> um, um, well, what happened was, and for those of you guys that are still listening, what's going on is that he uh, he had like a uh, a mole or is it a mole? A, a gopher? What are they called? A gopher. He has like a gopher or something like that that chewed through one of his. Uh, Wi-Fi cable or his cables, yeah, his cable so he's been it. trying to get his internet cables uh, fixed. But the problem is, it's 150 feet of uh, cable, <laughs> so he's got to dig it up and find out exactly where the problem is. Uh, I mean, outside of the problem in his head, you know, he's. Uh, he's, uh, he's and then I'm out here oh, telling man. him that he that he ought to be wiring his cable from above the ground, so just like dangling it from the ceiling. Like I don't understand what his big problem is with that. Nah, it's 150 feet. You're gonna hang. And then he's got to put cables every. He's gonna have to put posts, probably oh, like every. I don't know. Run it tight. Come feet. on, man. It's big, John. Come on, bro. All right. Well, there he is. He's back. Look at. Welcome back, John. So nice to have you back. I mean, thanks for joining the show. <laughs> uh, I, bro- I think I broke my hip. I fell oh. Down. Oh, that's what age man. does. Oh man. Well, hey, that's get <laughs> falling off. That's gonna wrap up our. <laughs> Always falling off. It's that's it's that Tennessee uh, Wi-Fi, buddy. It's the Tennessee. That no, has nothing to do with Tennessee Wi-Fi. Don't mm. ever bury a cable without putting it in conduit. That was a mistake. Oh, man. Especially there, right? What was it? A beaver or something? What is it? A mole? No. Nah, well, got it's it. It's like a fucking like gopher. A, a gopher? Mole? Who the fuck I don't knows? Know, something. Decided. Knows? No, let me taste this for a while. <laughs> All right. Hey, that's going to wrap up our UFC talk. And uh, before we move on, why don't you guys go over to OnlyFans.com slash Wayne in. Subscribe to us over there. It is free. I want to thank you guys for continuing to support us. We have, we've had a lot of new subscribers actually as, as of recently. We want to thank you guys. And uh, like I said, it's free. We're just putting extra content up over there. And, uh, and we are talking about sports. There's nothing else going on there. We are talking about sports. They have hired us to basically talk about bringing more sports uh, to their pro- to their platform, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get more MMA people over there, which we've been successful with, and we're trying to get more uh, sports activities over there as well. People that are interested in coaching boxing, kickboxing, MMA, good place for you guys to put your content up and people to, for them to purchase it uh, for you to make a little extra spending cash. So head over to OnlyFans.com slash Wayne in. Uh, what do you Boom. got for us there? Let's talk about some one. One is this weekend, right? It is this weekend, very but nice, it's got very the, nice. a, big, a, a mix of the, one of the things that's nice about one, they got the mix of the Muay Thai with the MMA, sometimes with submission grappling. I don't think they have any submission grappling on this one, but they do have Gary Tonin, who is in, I believe, his ninth professional MMA fight, taking on a very tough Gassanoff. That's not an easy fight for him. No, it's not. You know, where, where Gary Turner has a hard time with is where people who can stuff a lot of his underguard, you know, his deep half and all of those things. Yep. He has a hard time with those guys. And Gastonov is going to be able to go ahead and stuff some of that. Early in the fight, it'll be a little bit more difficult for him. He's going to have to keep that space, let the hands go, and try to stay in the top position, but also not get swept or get submitted from the top position. So Gary being nasty with the legs, Gary being uh, aggressive with his striking. He's actually... Started to kind of come into his own in the striking division. Yeah, he's not no, he afraid. looks way better. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's not afraid anymore. Uh, the problem with that, though, comes with when you get with someone who has been doing it for a little bit longer, they're a little bit tighter with their techniques, and he's been clipped before. And, uh, you know, but then, like I said, this is one of those fights you can go either way because I say Gary can sub you at any second, any moment, any time, and Gastonoff can also sprawl and brawl, keep this fight on the feet, and let the hands go. And as the fight goes on, the sweat starts to, to come into play. I think you look for Gastonoff to really start letting the ground and pound go as well. So it's going to be a good fight. It should be a fun fight. Yeah, it Next fight. it's actually a really good matchup. You got Amir Alkabari, who is a phenomenal Greco-Roman wrestler, Olympic gold medalist, taking on Justin Joinson. Uh, that's, a, that's a tough matchup for Mr. Joinson. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I mean, but um, Amir is a two-time Greco-Roman gold medalist. And phenomenal in the t- in terms of the top position. Got heavy hands. He's not bad on the feet, believe it or not. He's not no, bad on the feet. He used to train no, he'll the team. throw, but he's he does get the, tired. 
He does get tired. He's a big guy. He used to train with Team AKA over in Thailand with Mike Swick. That's kind of where he kind of started to kind of make a name for himself, you know, outside of wrestling. But that's kind of where he started making a name for himself uh, in the sport of MMA was he was training with Mike Swick out at um, American Kickboxing Academy in Thailand. So looking, looking forward to seeing his fight this weekend as well. John, any other fights on this card you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, you got Walter. Musa... Hey, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tammy uh, Musa Mitchie. Yeah. yeah. Is that her? Is that his? Is that? Is that her? Uh, is, uh, I don't know I, if it's sister or wife or what. Yeah. Can you look that or up, Mikey? Yeah. I don't know. See if. But that look, that she... looks like it's a fight. Yeah. I don't know. That is not a submission grappling. Maybe it's not. What, see, can you, you see if see they're related it, to Mikey? Um, no, can you look it up? You have to. You have to uh, check yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah, no worries. You're gonna have to look on that thing. But yeah, but the first name is Mikey. I, I don't know. Who's Mikey? That's not a common name. What, what, what did I search? Oh, I searched. This, Jesus, Dave is completely Dave is, lost on Dave's this. I was trying. I was trying to copy. Is. I was trying to copy and paste, but it just wasn't. Uh, it's it wasn't all right, dude. Right name. See, it's like, like right, I'm man. not. There we go. There we go. And then you said Mike. Yeah, you just saw Mike. Yeah. You sure that's not the sister? I don't know. I, I'm. Let's see what Wikipedia says. It yeah. says siblings. Uh. Division yeah, Mikey. Born, Notable relatives, right there on the Mikey, right. Yeah. Brother, yeah, yeah it's a brother. That's what okay, yeah. it makes sense. It makes sense. I just wasn't sure because I have never heard. Yeah, I've only heard of Mike. Yeah, I haven't heard of Tammy. So, I, so then I wonder: is this a grappling match? Then I don't. I don't that know. One, let's see. Let's say, it's a, normally it'll say it's a grappling match. It will say yeah. we're here grappling. Oh, it does straw weight yeah, grappling. grappling. Yes. Yep, yeah. There you go. I was like, I wouldn't think yep. that. Interesting. All right. Well, we're gonna find out. All right, well, hey, let's uh, let's go ahead and move on. We're gonna that's gonna wrap it up for our one talk. Look, it's really difficult for John and I to talk about the one because like a lot of the fighters, we just I mean, for me, anyways, I haven't heard of a lot of them, and a lot of times too, it's Muay Thai mixed in with MMA mixed in with grappling. So um, there's just a little bit of the you know some of the stuff that we have to try to have to be able to watch more of, which now we can because they're on Amazon Prime, so make it a little easier Prime. for us to watch. All right, let's get into some news. And the biggest news that dropped so far this week has been the Francis Ngano versus Tyson Fury fight. John, what do you think? It is on Saudi Arabia, October 28th. (laughs) My God, they're actually going to get it on in a ring under the Marcus of Queensberry rule set. So Tyson Fury is going to win this fight. (laughs) Let's just be honest. But uh, you look at Francis. Does he have a puncher's chance? No. Sorry. What? <laughs> I was waiting for what you were going to say. What? Uh, look at Francis has got enough power. He could hurt. He could definitely hurt uh, Tyson. The problem is landing that shot. It's not going to be an easy thing for him. Tyson is a very yeah. good defensive fighter. He's got good movement. He's got good footwork. He's got everything. Where Francis, truthfully, if you look at his footwork and you look at the way he throws and everything, he gets off balance. Tyson's going to take advantage of that. Uh, Francis can definitely land that one shot that could hurt anyone. But Tyson has been in with very big punchers before, so this is nothing new for him. John, I'm going to take a different approach. We have seen Tyson you go fight, ahead. or not Tyson, we, we've seen Francis Ngannou fight MMA. The boxing in MMA is you have to throw everything as pretty damn hard and aggressively, and you sometimes leave yourself out of position. But in boxing, he can go ahead and pitter-patter a little bit here and there, and then, then go ahead and go with the big shot. He needs to take more of the Nick and Nate Diaz approach when it comes to boxing. Touch, 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 and then let the power shots go. Now, I'm not saying they're going to land, John. I'm just simply saying that you, you're, you just said that he like leaves himself out of a position a you lot. You want him just, to like, yeah. be in, something in, that he's in, not. Look you, look, you don't know. You've never seen him box. You've never seen him box, box like you know. Outside of like your when he's boxing in MMA, when he's boxing in at Extreme Boot Tours, it's boxing MMA. I've seen him. It's not. I've I've seen him boxing in. He's there. Been, he's better since then, John. He's better. It's, he's better. <laughs> I'm playing the what if, man. What hey, if hey. if he if he's able to sit Tyson Fury to his butt, he's gonna ride his he's gonna ride his ticket. If he's able to sit okay. Tyson Fury down, I don't. I mean, even if Tyson gets up and smokes him the rest of the time and knocks him out. 
he's going to okay. write his own ticket because then you're going to see you're going to see Francis Ngannou with somebody like uh, uh, Wild Deontay Wilder. You're going to see him fight somebody like uh, I would even say maybe Anthony Joshua. You could potentially. I would have loved to have seen him fight that fight because that's a fight that I think that there was a little bit more likely of a shot a chance of him potentially more hitting a shot and Joshua more not hittable. getting up. More, a lot more hittable and more tends to hittable. slow down too as the fight goes into the fifth and sixth round. But so yeah. would I would imagine because that Francis will tend to slow down as well in that fifth and sixth round because it's just a different style of cardio. And if you're listening to this show and you're thinking, oh well, he's fought MMA, he's fought you know he's fought five rounds, he's done this, he's done that. It's different, man. It's nope. different when you're fighting somebody that's smooth, can make you miss, make and you really pay. knows how to put pressure on you in a boxing ring. Yeah. You get exhausted quick. Cut the cut the ring off. You know, every time you miss, they make you pay. They it they doesn't have to hit you hard. They just have to touch you. No, nope. just nope. to touch you, and it it kind of frustrates you a little bit. You realize you're you're that Chris Tucker man. You're thinking to yourself, which one of y'all motherfuckers hit me? Okay, because that they're over <laughs> here, it. and you're over here, and you're facing this way, and it it all goes together. You're just thinking to yourself, man, I just saw you right in front of me, and now you're behind me. And as I turn, I don't want to turn because they're gonna hit me with a clean shot. All of those things play a factor. Tyson Fury is light on his feet. He's got great movement. He makes you miss and he makes you pay. And he will go to the body and he will come back up top to the head. He will do it all. You know what I mean? And as this fight goes on, how many rounds? Do we know how many rounds this is? Ten. Uh, ten rounds. Ten, yeah. And I think by the sixth round, it's it's going to stop looking. It's not going to be looking good for, for Francis. I think by the sixth. But I think in, in that first six rounds... I'm going to give my boy some chance, baby. He's going to give him a chance. A puncher's chance is always a chance. So what you're saying is he's got a chance. He's got a chance. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm telling you, by the by the end of the fourth round, if it goes that far, mm -hmm. you're going to see Francis exhausted. Yeah, pro possibly. Possibly. John, here's the thing. <clears throat> a lot of people said that he fumbled the bag. I, I, I kind of was like, man, I, I thought he should have had a contract in hand and signed. Yeah. Right before, right as soon as that thing was done, as soon as his contract with the UFC was done and he was able to cut ties, I thought he should have had a contract in, in hand. And, um, and he didn't have that. And I, so I was kind of leaning towards that he did fumble the bag. He messed up. Did he output the coverage is in terms of, did he, was he asking for too much? Did he want, did he want too many things coming from a boxing side? What did he want that was so, you know, that was just so hard for these promoters to deal with. MMA promoters were having a hard time because he wanted to make waves and he wanted all these things. PFL gave it to him. But now mm -hmm. boxing, though, boxing, they, they go to different rules. They, they play by different rules. You know, the, all the act, all that stuff plays a, plays a factor. So I'm glad that he got it done. I'm happy for him. Um, his dreams are coming true. It makes sense for a heavyweight to go in there and, and test yourself. Um, I'm interested to see exactly how much he ends up making and good for him though. Good for him. He took the, he took the toughest motherfucker he could get and he fought. He, he no, he on, took the toughest guy he, he signed could get. On, signed on the dotted line. Good for him. I'm happy for him. Good. This I mean, guy, I see, I'm going to go to the other side because this is as simple as it gets, Josh. Be careful what you wish for. Uh, Not a good fight for him. John, I, I would, I would fight Mike Tyson for probably the amount of money he's making. Well, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying <laughs> that. Yeah. Like, you know? I fight Mike Tyson too for the you know the kind of money, but it's well, but you look at this and you go, <clears throat> I just I I love Francis. He's a great guy. He's a great human being. One of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. This is just you are you are playing a, another man's game. My dad always used to say, "Don't play another man's game." You know, yeah. you, I used to arm wrestle. You know, and then they started doing left-handed, and the guy would come up and say, "Here, I go. nope, I'm not mm -hmm. playing another man's game." You, you, there comes that point you got to say, "I'm an MMA fighter. You want to fight me? Come into my world." Tyson did exactly what he is supposed to do. I'm not going to play another man's game. You want to come into my world? Come on over. Yeah, Francis is going. Careful what you wish for. Well, there was all that John Jones and Tyson Fury talk, and Francis was able to slide his ass right in there and, and capitalize. <laughs> good, good for him, man. Good for him. Yeah, so yeah, that absolutely. that squashed the the Fury and the uh, John Jones situation. So I mean, who knows? It may rekindle later on. You never know. Because I, nope. I honestly believe that John Jones, after he be if he beats Stipe, I shouldn't say after he beats him, if he beats Stipe, then I think that he may just walk away and try to get into some sort of boxing. He'll try to do something else. I don't think he's John, gonna stay in MMA, John. John I think, I John think he's knows done. he's 
John knows he's not a boxer. The one thing I love about John Jones, John Jones knows who he is. He knows what he does in a, in in a cage. He knows how to fight, and he doesn't play other people's games. Mm -hmm. I don't see him going to boxing. He's the one guy I look and go. He's smart enough to say no, 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 no. Yeah, I utilize all parts of my body to do damage to people. Why am I going to give that up? Yeah. Dumb thing to do. Who who was the guy that GSP that they were talking about him fighting in boxing? Canelo. Oh there was God. somebody that mm -hmm. GSP was talking about fighting in boxing. I can't remember. Can you look this up, Dave? I believe it was Canelo. That there was talk of him fighting Canelo, and um, and that whole thing fell apart. Remember, because I remember like GSP he asked would to be get smoked. Yeah, I know, but he was asking, I believe, to fight boxing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> And then the UFC told him no. And then shortly after that, do you recall? Then they did the Connor fight, I believe. Mm. The uh, Connor and Mayweather. Also well, says 2013, 2019. Could GSP beat Canelo? And that's just uh, yeah, that's not okay. it. <clears throat> hmm. Um, I know that there was Kamaru Usman was talking about it. Now I remember when the UFC wanted George to fight Anderson Silva, but that was an MMA. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember that. There was a boxing match, though, I think, that, that they were talking about that he wanted. He wanted something to do with boxing. I can't remember what who it was. Yeah. George St. Pierre? Yeah, George St. Pierre was looking to do a boxing match. I want to say it was Canelo. It might have been Mayweather, but I believe it was Canelo. And the UFC shot it down. Yep. <clears throat> All right, well, hey, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and move on. The the Francis Ngannou oh, yeah. and Tyson Oscar Fury. De La Hoya. It was Oscar oh, De La Hoya. Oh, Oscar De La Hoya. Dana That's... White block potential trailer <laughs> boxing match with Oscar De La Hoya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes yeah. sense, though. Yeah, it totally makes he, sense. He, he Dana's Oscar. favorite person is Oscar De La Hoya. He, he fucking hates him. Oh he man, you think you, John? I mean, it's a, it's a good. Th it's a good thing Dana doesn't hold a grudge. Yeah, <laughs> people ask me all the time, like, why does Dana not like him? Like, well, I just I didn't stay with them. Like, I didn't go back to them. They, you know, even when in the beginning, uh, they had asked me if I wanted to fight at one seventy. I was like, Duh, do you guys see the size of Matt Hughes? Do you guys see the size like of these guys at one seventy? <laughs> Certain guys stayed. Man, Rich Clemente, he stayed. He fought at one seventy. I mean, remember he was he was the original no love. Rich Clemente. Oh, yeah. And he stayed and fought at 170. And I was like, nah, man, I'm out. I'm done. I was walking around like 68, 69 at the time. I'm like, there's no way I'm fighting guys at 170. These guys are cutting from 200, you know? Um, but yeah, uh, good on him. I mean, like, I would love to have seen GSP in, in Oscar De La Hoya. But I understand the hatred that Dana has for <laughs> Oscar De La Hoya. I get it. I get it. All right, next fight. Next. Oh, uh, Marlon Vera is taking on Pedro Munoz. In uh, August 19th in the city of Boston, that's the fight that was supposed to be Henry Cejudo, Pedro Munoz stepping in there and uh, you know, taking on Chito Vera. That's actually, you know, that's a great fight. It's, you know, I think Chito is uh, probably the more dynamic fighter, but Pedro Munoz has had a, just a hell of a career in the UFC. You know, I, I remember him before that he was in the UFC. He's a hell of a fighter. Tough dude, got a lot of power. Used to have a really good ground game that he used. Now he doesn't really use it that much. No. Just, you know, tries to go after people with, you know, knockout power. Tough dude, though. So Marlon Vera's got to be very careful. He's got a tough man in front of him. Yeah, he's got a tough man in front of him, but he's got a man who's got some miles on him there, John. You know, and that's the yeah. only thing. With, with Cheeto, Cheeto's avoided quite a bit of damage. You know, um, <clears throat> he has he has taken some in the last, you know, in his last fight. But I look at I look at the way he fights. Uh the leg kicks couldn't be, play a factor the way that Chito kicks because Munoz is more of a, he's basically just dwindling himself boxing. down to just straight boxing. You know, yep. he's good at checking kicks. He's good. He can, he can wrestle too. And he's got good grappling. He just chooses not to do it. And I think if he's going to have success, he needs to get this fight to the ground because on the feet, the elbows of Chito, the kicks of Chito and the power of Chito, I think are going to be a problem for him because he's going to, yeah. he's going to get hit with some big shots and Chito's going to be able to hit him with the elbows. going to be able to kick him inside leg kick calf kick, all of those things will start slowing Munoz down to make him more hittable. Pedro's already kind of hittable. No matter how much I like Pedro, no, no matter how good um, he was in the past and how much I really do enjoy watching him fight, to me, this is a, a stylistically a bad matchup for him because Chito will take all the shots that he has to deliver from Munoz and he can take this fight to the ground. Chito can as well, but you know that Pedro's not going to take this fight to the ground where he should be, he should be thinking about taking it to. I agree. Right. At, at range, I think Chito Vera's got a very uh, 
a large advantage. Uh, if he can keep this thing on, you know, keeping Pedro to the outside, Pedro's going to have his rushes where he comes in and tries to throw big, big power. Mm-hmm. Cheeto's very good at off stepping, countering, doing the things that make someone pay for those moments. So I, I agree with you. I think if Pedro Munoz wants to look towards, you know, beating Marlon Vera, he's got to work at getting this fight to the ground, get to the top position, do damage from there. Do you look at this like a Rob Font type fight for Cheeto? <sighs> no, Rob, because Rob, I don't. Rob's, I, Rob's, Rob's kicks, a, he kicks a little bit, but he's mainly a boxer. He's all, but he's also a much more dynamic fighter as far yeah. as the repertoire that he has with his hands and the and the combinations he throws. Pedro throws a lot of power, and he's got power. He, he can he can smack. He can put you down, but he doesn't throw with the the variety of a Rob Font. So I think Rob Font is a much more difficult fight. Uh, in the stand-up game for Vera, and you saw that you know, Vera had problems at times with Rob. Rob was winning a lot of those rounds. It was just that Cheeto was able to land the big shot, hurt him in the round, and that would give him the round and eventually put him away. Yeah. All right, next fight. What else is there to talk about there, Dave? Next fight. Oof. Tai Tuiavasa versus Alexander Volkov. <laughs> Drago. <laughs> He's a I'll tell you what, Volkov has had a hell of a UFC career, man. Coming over from Bellator, where he was at one time the heavyweight champion there, 36 and 10. That's a ton of fights. 46 fights taken on a man that is known for drinking beer out of a shoe, (laughs) but he is fun to watch. He is great. He's great entertainment. He's a good brawler. He's, you know, he's actually really, you know, increased his game and stuff from, you know, when we first saw him and stuff. He's a much better fighter. Um, in the stand-up, the length of uh, Volkov could give uh, Tuyavasa trouble. He's got to get inside, and when he gets inside, he's got to do damage. But we've seen him do that before with other guys, so we know Tuyavasa can do it. If Tuyavasa fights him uh, kind of how he fought uh, Sorogon, I think he's got a good chance of getting uh, Volkov out of there. He's got to crush that space, got to let the hands go and touch him, touch him, because he had moments in that fight against Sorogon where he had gone hurt. And he just wasn't able to get him out of there, and then it ended up backfiring. He ended up getting he ended up getting hurt himself. Um, but I look at Volkov, like you said, the push kick up the middle, that little thigh kick he likes to do. All of those things will play a factor. The long jab, he's got to slip off line, get his head off line, close that space, let the hands go. He can't afford to wait. Yeah, <clears throat> he can't afford to wait. He's got to let those hands go. And if he does, and if he touches him, I think Volkov's prime for being knocked out. Prime, I think, with with the way that Tuivasa throws those tight little hooks on the inside, and yeah. Volkov is used to using his arms and reaching out, controlling the distance, it, it plays a factor. And so if Tuivasa can land that clean shot, I think you'll see Volkov go to sleep. So it's going to be a fun fight, though. I think both of them um, need to get get themselves headed back to the title. That's yeah, I don't think there's a I don't think there's a fight that Tuivasa is in that's not a fun fight. So <laughs> he's, he's just a fun guy to watch. Next, yeah. what else you got for us, Dave? All right, next one here. Uh, Kevin Lee decided he is retiring from MMA. Uh, he put it out on thread on a new Instagram Threads uh, app, and he said, "I'm going to retire from the UFC, but I can't find the right words to use in the video." He then later elaborates and says, "Okay, to make a long story short, I'm deciding to retire from MMA and the UFC. It's been 12 years, 12 long years of me being the best fighter that I can be and a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication for me trying to be the best fighter in the world. When I look back on it, I had a hell of a career. I fought a lot of tough guys, some of the toughest guys in the world. I've always put up a great fight. I never backed down. I always challenged myself to do things I didn't think I was capable of doing. The last three years have been rough, especially on my body. It's been a lot of injuries and honestly, that's one of the main factors for me making a decision. I'm in need of another surgery after the last fight. I'm proud I went out of my shield. I'm proud that I stood out in there uh, and went out on my own terms. But at this point, I have to think about more than just myself and my skills. I, I think my skills and the time and energy that I put into the sport, I can put into something else. And God willing, uh, and all glory to God, he's going to lead me down a different path. The right path to where I can use my skills yeah, to help people. I, can't I was waiting that. to see if he was going to say it. I, I was going to see if you could I pronounce can. it. I cannot. I think oh, if I dedicate door. myself to, and I give I give as much hard work to doing something else, the sky's the limit. So again, I hold my head up high. I'm a little disappointed I didn't get to accomplish everything I wanted to, but I'm proud of myself for this career I've had. 
appreciate everybody that's given two fucks about me and everybody who supported me and even the people that kind of doubted and hated along the way i appreciate everybody it's been a hell of a journey i'm still young i'm capable of doing a lot in this life and, and it's what i'm going to do yeah, I mean, he had a good career. I mean, like it just it didn't it didn't pan out that everyone the way that everyone thought it would. I think with hit the expectations were set pretty high when he first exploded onto the scene. Um, it, it's very difficult, I think, for the younger talent to live up to those expectations. I mean, a lot of people, even including myself, I was like, man, this guy can wrestle. This guy's got power. You know, he's physically strong, and the way the way he beat Michael Chiesa just shocked me. And I was like, wow. Because I believe he caught him in a rear naked, right? Was it guillotine or rear naked? He caught him in a choke. No, it was a, it was a rear, rear naked, but it was stopped before Kiesa went out. It was a wow. weird stoppage. Interesting. But I just, I look at, I look at that fight. I look at that fight and I look at some other past fight. I'm like, he, he had high expectations. People had high expectations for him. Yeah. And <clears throat> shortly after that, it just didn't, it wasn't able to pan out. It just didn't live up to it. I mean, he had great moments in, in a lot of great fights. Uh, but sadly, he came out on the losing end of on, on some of those big ones. And so uh, then we went away, tried to reinvent himself, and then came back and, you know, gave it another go. Um, but you know what? I, I think for some reason, what is he, 29? I think he's still young. He's 30. He's 30. So I would give him, I bet you he'll walk away for a year. Give him a couple years. Yeah. I think he'll be back before he's 32. Right before yeah. he turns 32, I think he'll be back. Maybe right I don't now think he's he'll disappointed. Be back. Yeah, I don't think he'll be back in the UFC, but I think he'll be back. Whether it's whether he goes to PFL, whether he goes to you know one, I don't know. But whether whatever promotions are around at that time, we'll see. But uh, I, I don't think he's done yet. I think there's there's still money on the table for him to be had, and and um, I think he's going to capitalize on that. Just not right now. Give him some time to get his focus back and. And sort some things out and uh, reinvent himself a little bit. Probably he ain't, he won't stop training, you know. He won't stop training. But he'll take a little bit of a break, you know, maybe three months, four months off. But he'll get back in the gym. It's hard to walk away from the gym, man. It's hard to walk away from your friends in the gym. All your hard friends to walk are away from yeah. It's everyone that you've known for, like you said, for the last twelve years. It's everybody you know. It's that That's those it. those have been your those have been your mainstay friends. Every day you walk in the gym, and you see them. Every day you walk in. And, you guys go have lunch every day, you know, like you're joking around in the locker room, whatever it is, you know, on the mats or in the, in the cage or in the locker room or at, at lunch, whatever it is, you guys, those have been your closest friends. So it's hard to walk away from that. So I think at 30 years old, he'll be back. He'll be back. I would tend to think that you're right about that. But if he doesn't, you know, it, this is the thing about, you know, do me a favor, pull up, pull up his record. Because the one thing about Kevin Lee is yes, he had some losses to people. But usually those were big name people. He had some big wins too. You know, he had, he had the loss to Tony Ferguson for the interim title. Mm -hmm. That was after beating, uh, Trinaldo and Chiesa. And then comes back, he beat Edson Barbosa. That's a hell of a win. Shit. And then he lost a couple in there. The Gregor Gillespie, the kick to the head. My God, what a win that was, you know, against an undefeated guy in Gregor Gillespie. But, you know, he, he has a lot to look at as far as his career and be proud of because he really he fought some of the very best guys out there and he got some wins against you know some really good fighters you know there's times that things didn't work out for him that's part of fighting but he is young i think he's just disappointed with you know he got he got the return to the ufc and that fight look everybody who knew who he was fighting knew that that was a tough fight for him mm -hmm. I think he knew it too in taking the fight. He knew, you know, the, his coaches were not dumb. They know exactly what he was up against. Mm -hmm. He just didn't think that it was going to end the way it did with him getting choked unconscious, but he got hurt. Happened. Yeah. But take time, you know, and, and if this is the end, hey, Kevin, you had a hell of a career. You were fun to watch, hell of an athlete, hell of a fighter. And, uh, you have nothing, nothing to look back on with anything but a lot of pride. Yeah. I mean, look at like, look, his loss to Tony Ferguson. And then he goes up and he beats Edson Barboza next. Then he loses to Alec Quinta. Alec Quinta fought Khabib for the title. You know, let's not be mistaken. Alec Quinta's a fucking dog. He's he's a tough fight for anyone because he was shorter in stature, good wrestling, got big power in his hands. Like, he knew how to make fights interesting, like, difficult. And then he lost to RDA, RDA former champion. Like, let's be honest, man. RDA is a fucking animal. He's a fucking future Hall of Famer for sure. Then he knocks out Gregor Gillespie, then turns around and loses to Charles Oliveira. Okay, who hasn't lost to Charles Oliveira, by the way? Okay, like, you know what I mean? Like, Charles Oliveira. Then he loses to D-Rod. 
D-Rod's phenomenal, man. D-Rod's a... F I mean, people don't maybe... Back then, people were probably high on him. But D-Rod's an animal, man. D-Rod has, has come through as of recently. He's having great fights. Great fights. Then he beats Diego Sanchez. Then he loses to... How do you say his name? Renat? Renat? Yeah. Renat. 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 I don't want to butcher yeah. the guy's last name. I'm going to even try to... Fakrandinov. Fakla. Fakra. Fakrandinov. Fakrandinov. Okay. Fakrandinov. Okay. Anyways, I think he loses to him. Look, and this guy's an animal as well. And everyone kind of, you know who he is, and you know how damn good he is. And it's a tough fight, tough fight. Look, he had a great career. His losses are two guys that everyone knows. Everybody Good. knows. We all know Tony Ferguson, Ali Quinta, RDA, Charles Oliveira. Now everyone knows D-Rod. Everyone's going to know who we're not is. <laughs> okay, yep. so. That's true. All right. Uh, best of luck, my man. If you don't come back, I uh, hope, hope the next chapter for you in your life is successful. What else you got for us, Dave? All right. I'll give you the floor now, Josh. If you, if was, you know, you said earlier we would kind of roll into some thoughts mm -hmm. on some of the stuff we talked about yeah. at the beginning of the show. Yeah. I mean, like, look, in the last show and then even on this, this little bit, look, we, there was something I tweeted the other day and I want people to understand that it's not. I tweeted something. I go, look, why is it? And this is, I'm, I'm giving from experience from me fighting as well. Not just, not just spouting off. And for everyone thinking this is about, um, this is about Ariel. It's not, it's not about Ariel. It's about the MMA media just in general. As I've noticed a tendency and maybe John, you can speak to this a little bit is that when fighters turn down people to go on their show, like, Hey, I just can't get it in or I'm training or they get offended. They get upset, they get offended, and then they make it a purpose to go out and try to butcher them or or criticize them in any way they can, whether it's after a fight, before a fight, or whatever. They find ways to kind of mount some sort of attack on them. And I, th I think that is really, to me, it kind of separates from the mainstream media to, to the MMA media. That's, I think, what separates the two things. We still have people that are working in MMA media and I know this maybe sounds familiar because I believe back in the day, Dana used to talk about this was the MMA media is, you know, are people that not all of them train, not all of them have done jujitsu, not all of them have done boxing, not all of them have done kickboxing, not all of them have ever wrestled in their life. Whereas in a lot of the sports that you talk, whether it's M whether it's NBA, whether it's major league baseball, whether it's football, <clears throat> a lot of the people that cover those sports, they at some point played the sport. And they speak from whatever experience they have. Not all. I mean, not all. But I'm saying like, yeah, you know, a lot, of them, a lot of them have played, you know, or have, have at least competed in it or have, you know, played at a low level, whether it's high school, whether it was, you know, even middle school. I mean, at least they've done it. You can't really say the same thing for MMA media. But yet, I feel they, they tend to criticize or they tend to attack um, some of the athletes that decide not to go on their show or not to, not to do interviews with them or, you know, and I don't understand why I don't get it. Look, this is just my, my opinion. And when John, when John and I are up here talking about um, who we think is going to win, it's I'm not trying to slight fighters at all. I, I don't, I just, in my experience of watching that fighter fight, I think this person has the advantage or I think this person is a little bit better on the ground. I'm not trying to talk shit about them. I'm giving you my opinion and what I have viewed and I've seen from that perspective of, of from from the TV or from watching it live. It's no different than when I call a fight. It's my opinion. I think this person should maybe do this. I think, oh, he's doing a great job or she's doing a great job from the top position. I'd like to see her try and do this. It's my opinion on based on like well, what the strategy should poss possibly be. But look, we've had I've had fighters that I've reached out to and been like, hey, man, can we get you on the show? I've actually had fighters tell me, hey, man, like I would love to come on. But I also know that there's been talk and word that Dana doesn't like you guys and da da da, and so they've decided not to. And I said, look, th this your your career is a lot bigger than than what my show is, and I'm not trying to get you in any trouble. I'm not trying to make you feel like you need to come on here. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that person. Like you were talking about your family, you're feeding your family, your career, your ability to 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 stay in the good graces of the guy who signs your check. I'm not mad about it. I'm not throwing anybody on, on the spot. I'm not talking shit about them. Like I, I, I can admire, I actually admire the people that reach out and go, Hey man, like it's a little tough because you know, like there is some issues and you know, and like, and there is buzz around whether it's UFC or whatever, you know, like, Hey, like 
uh, you know, they're, they're not too high on you. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'm happy with that. I'm okay with that. I appreciate you letting me know though. That's the thing is I appreciate that. The respect that comes when someone tells you the truth instead of trying to be like, oh yeah, I'll do it. But then, you know, it's got to be later. And then you never hear back from them or you hear back from them like, you know, later, later, later. And it's like, oh yeah, we have to get up and we meet again every time you see them. Yeah, I still want to come on, but they never do. It's those, those are the ones that I'm like, oh man, <laughs> like you're, you're, you're frustrating me and wasting my time. I don't, I just don't want to see, I see that the MMA media, and tell me if I'm wrong, am I wrong, John? Am I, am I viewing this wrong? Have you seen, have you seen this? I've, my experience from the years, I've seen it happen to several people in my gym at AKA, not just me, other fighters. It happened all the time to cost check. People would talk shit about him because they didn't <laughs> like the way, because he would turn him down. Like, fuck no, I'm not going to that guy's show. He fucking talked shit about me the last fight. He's like, sure, I didn't win or whatever it was, but like the shit he said was, was uncalled for. It's like, no, I ain't fucking doing that guy's show. You know, or I'm not doing an interview with that guy. Fuck off. Or they wanted to come to the gym and like they wanted to video him and film him and do all these things. It's like, fuck no, you guys can't come to the gym. No, we're not doing that. You guys, I remember what you guys said about me. Luke Rockhold called out somebody with, um, remember when he was talking about, uh, uh, Chito Vera? Bro, he's not even fucking from Mexico. Get your fucking facts no, straight. Ecuador. Like, yeah. And then they got all mad. They got all, you know, and, People get upset about stuff like that. And then you hear it in the, the next media or the next news cycle. I'm not saying that those guys did that. I'm just saying the next news cycle that comes out on them tends to be a negative news cycle. Why is that, John? Ah, because everyone's got an ego. Let's just be honest about it. You know, it, it, it's the how many times have we talked? And, I, and I, I have a theory about, you know, being involved, not being a fighter, but being involved in the fight game i've seen too many people that you know never never been in a fight in their life that all of a sudden are now involved in the fight game and as i've told you they become a tough guy look <laughs> and you go dude you're not tough stop what are you doing okay it, you don't have good fighters don't go around acting tough mm -hmm. okay they prove it in the cage they don't have to and it looks ridiculous when you do well what sometimes happens is it because someone gets their feelings hurt it's their way of attacking if, if you have the ability to you know bring on somebody that you know can say something about the person or you want to do it they tend to do that and it's like it's uncalled for you don't need it yeah and i just look at it and say hey treat people the way you want to be treated if you don't like someone that's okay but be honest about who they are and what they do you know, there, there are fighters that, you know, Josh, that, you know, I really like. And there's fighters that I go, I don't really like them. Mm. But I'm going to be honest about their performance. I'm going to be honest about what they do. And, you know, I always give anyone a chance to come on the show if they wanted to come on the show, if, you know, as long as it was they had a fight coming up or something like that. But I don't worry about, you know, all that stuff is just bullshit. <laughs> it's just <laughs> bullshit. It is. It's just bullshit. You know what? I, Treat people good. Yeah, I just I feel like there's a separation right now from the MMA media. And maybe it's been this way. I just haven't noticed it as much um, from before. I noticed it when I was fighting, but I just I did, back then I just didn't care. I was like, yeah, whatever, man. Like, I got to worry about my fight. I don't got to worry about what the media is saying and what they're doing and whether they're mad at somebody for something or me for something. But as I've, as I've stepped away from the sport and we're just now we're just covering, you know, we're talking about fights and we're talking about fighters. Um, I've just noticed that it's become more of a, more of a, oh, you, this person won't interview with me or this person won't come on my show or this person won't, or something was said, or, or this is the next thing when we talk about with, with the Izzy situation from Saturday, there's a couple things with the Izzy situation is. I don't, I don't really care that he said it, whatever he the saying the N word, John, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I don't care, but what I did, what, what I did find strange is look, if you want to get this sport to the next level, cause people were like, Oh, your kids were watching fight fights. I'm like, you know how many parents bring their kids to live events? It's a fucking spectacular event. Are you kidding me? Why would I not take my damn kid? Oh, he's watching fighting. What so are you what? talking about? It's a like, sport. Fighting is fighting to me. Look, and here's the other thing is that if you want to get this sport to the next level, like you think 
people take people to football. Like, they take their kids to football games all the time. People get knocked out in football games all the time, you know. And then the same thing, like like they take them to to whether it's other events, whatever it is. People take their kids to boxing matches all the time. Criticizing a, a parent for taking their kid or will having their kids watch fighting is just ridiculous. Dumbest thing I've ever heard. I'm sorry, but last I checked. I mean, my kids, he's several belts in to jujitsu. He's not bad, you know? And on top of that, like he understands probably more of the, of the grappling game than a lot of people that are sitting home watching. So criticizing him is very, is, it seems very criticizing me for him watching it since he actually understands what's going on. Secondly, he wasn't even watching, didn't really care. It was, wasn't. And then you can, most parents can attest to this. And every parent in the arena probably will attest to this. The kid probably didn't even really notice what was going on. When a parent or somebody, somebody, if you're watching a movie and somebody says something with conviction, that child will lift their head up automatically and look. How do you think when parents, like, how do you think when kids learn something? It's because in a movie when they heard it or on YouTube when they heard it, it's because whoever said it said it with such conviction, they thought it sounded cool. That's exactly what it is. Like, I'm sorry, but when I was younger, when I was younger, I was watching something I probably shouldn't have been watching because I was I was watching something else and the and the VHS ran out. So the TV Careful. came back on. <laughs> the VHS <laughs> ran out and the TV came on. And when that happened, I heard the word fuck. And I said, fuck. And my parents said, because it was said with such conviction in the movie. And so that's what happens is kids pick up things when parents or people or whatever say it with such energy and conviction that people that that's how the kids pick these words up. My point was, is look, it didn't bother me that he said it the first time. It was the repetitiveness. It was the drive at home. It was the, let me get everyone's attention and using the word. And, and at no time is it, is this, is this becoming a race thing? And it shouldn't be, should it should be, be like, Hey, it should never be. But on top of that, it should be, Hey, you think you're, you, you think because I was just born in Nigeria and then now I moved to New Zealand that I'm not African. Well, let me prove it to you. Say though, like, I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and tell him what to say, but that's what the whole thing should have been about was it doesn't matter where I'm from. I'm still going to fuck you up. That's what it should have been about. And the same thing for, for, um, Driscus is that he should have just basically said like, look, I, and, and I understood what he was saying. And a lot of people I think understood is that I breathe African air. I'm, I live here. I train here. And you hear a lot of other fighters that like Chael Sonnen did this with uh, Anderson Silva. What are you talking about? This guy, he represents Brazil. He lives over there in, in Calabasas in a big ass house. He's not Brazilian. He's American now. Like you heard, like Chael said it with Val Vanderlei also. Same thing. These guys haven't lived in Brazil in decades. Like they haven't been there forever. They don't even go back. They sent a check maybe to, to, to their town and says, here, go feed some people. That like that type of stuff. That's kind of the chail that was getting under his skin, and and that's what I think uh, Duplessis is trying to say. He's trying to say the same thing. He's trying to say like, look, I live here, I train here. I didn't leave where I was from to try and and try and uh, and win a championship. I'm gonna try and do it right here from my home, from my own country. I don't think this, I don't think, I think the perception of it all was that it was meant to be racist and in no way did I feel that it was that way, but I don't really care. I just was more, I was more focused on the N word being thrown around when not just me, like, I like even just my son, like not just my kid, any kids that were in the arena, don't even make it about my kid. Like I saw people in the comments trying to make it about like, oh, you're a horrible father because you let your kid watch fights. Don't even make it about my kid. What about all those? There was there was probably, I'd say probably about 3,000 kids in there that night. I'd be willing to bet there was about 3,000 kids in that arena that night because their their parents took them. What does that make them? That, make me, that makes 3,000 parents shitty parents? So look, you're teaching your kids about the world, whether it's fighting, whether all these things. And sure, it could be a learning moment, I guess, from my part in terms of with my son. <clears throat> but you have to, I also believe there's a time and a place for it. You know, and I mean, right there in front of me, it kind of caught me off guard, the repetitiveness of it all. And Izzy can say and do whatever he wants. Like Dana said, I'm not trying to control fighters in their speech. That's not my business. He never We're has. In the fight game. He never has. He never has. Never. He'll come out and say, like, I think it's stupid when you talk about politics and God. 
you know, because you're going to lose fans. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but in this in this scenario, in this situation, everyone was killing us in one section on the comments, and the other section they were killing us, and they were agreeing with us, or me, anyways. But in that process, I I look, I didn't say that the UFC is going to lose fans. I think that people that were following Izzy and they love and they wanted to, they continue to support Izzy. That that situation, I think, kind of put a little bit of a bad taste. And I heard some people, and I talked to people, and people in the comments, people on Twitter, said, "Yeah, it turned me off. I was disappointed in him as a champion. I was disappointed in him as a champion for saying that, because his his fighting does all his talking. The oh, guy yeah. is Absolutely. fantastic. Oh. Dude is just slick, man. He's good on the feet. He's got great takedown defense." Why do you think these guys haven't been able to beat him in the 185 pound division? Because he's fucking good. You know, he's good everywhere. He's fantastic. <clears throat> and so, not to mention, he's that next level. I, I saw a little thing that Chael did. Sorry. <coughs> I saw a little thing that Chael did and talked about he's kind of taking over the Connor role. He's kind of starting to put his, he's probably kind of playing a little bit of a heel, but he's also playing that I'm the man, which he is the man. I think he is the man. You know, um, but in the same token, the stuff that Connor said about Khabib and Khabib's father and Khabib's country and Khabib's wife and all those things, there it's there's not there's not there shouldn't be a place for that. There shouldn't no, be a place for that in sports. Line. That's crossing the line. There shouldn't be a place for that in sports. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna take a look at this and it, you know, everyone's gonna have their own opinion. But you know, I'm I'm gonna tell people right now. Look, I, I really like Connor McGregor. I like him as a fighter. I like him as a person when I've been around him and stuff. I like Israel Adesanya. I like him as a fighter. I liked him as a person when I was around him and stuff. And both of them were just or are just phenomenal at what they do. But all of us as human beings can do things that we can look back on and go, that probably wasn't the right right way of going about something. Now, I'm not saying that's what, that's what Israel is going to do. But Israel, you're the champion. You don't have to do anything when it comes to any opponent other than walk in that cage and say, you're next. That's all it really is because they all know how good you are. They all know what they're up against. There's no one that's going to sit there and truly downplay your skill set because there's nothing to downplay. You are the man. You are a phenomenal middleweight. You are a guy that can fight stand up as good as anybody has ever fought stand up in the the sport of mixed martial arts and your ground you know as far as you're always you're always improving and your ground defense as far as your ability to keep the fight from being on the ground because there's guys that have taken you down and you've always gotten yourself back to your feet for the most part except for Blahovich where I think size and strength and getting a little tired might have been that yeah. but there's nothing that anyone can say he's a phenomenal fighter in some way there's always that guy, and I think Habib did it with Connor to a point. I think they, Habib kind of got under Connor's skin, and Connor had to bite back. And I think that in this, I think Driscus has kind of gotten under, you know, Israel's skin as far as just he bothered him. He bothered him as far as saying, you know, that, you know, you're you're not African. Of course, he was born in, in Nigeria. Now, yes, he lived most of his, his life in New Zealand. But he's Nigerian. He's, you know, so you, you can take a look at Kamaru Usman. Lived most of his life in the United States. But he, he associates himself as Nigerian. You can take a look at Francis Ngannou. He's lived a lot of places. But he's from Cameroon. You know, I, I totally understand if you're taking pride with where you're from. But when you are the champ, you don't ever have to go in there and play it up. You can. But most of the time, it's best just to say, you're next. No one's going to doubt Izzy's skills. <clears throat> He's been the man of that weight class for the longest time. You know, um, That's not even what I'm trying to get into in terms of that type of stuff. I think it was more about how it was presented that night. And yeah. whether, yeah, and look, it didn't come the emotions off, it didn't get the better of off. us. It didn't come off as something that you can look at and say, that was a great moment. It wasn't. No. It wasn't a great moment. Yeah, I just, for me, I feel like it doesn't matter if it was him. It doesn't matter if it was uh, no. Drickus. It doesn't matter about any, it, the, as like you said, John, is that we could all do better. 
And that's, that's it. it. <clears throat> that's the way I, I guess that's just the way I'll leave it. We can all do better. Including myself, including John, including obviously podcast Dave can. I mean, he lives well, <laughs> he's with podcast Dave. Of course he can do better. Uh, <laughs> so um all right, well, hey, I will say, I will say this. And, I will uh, say this. I, Hold on. I want to say this, though, because I don't, again, I'm being honest, I don't read the comments. But if, if people out there were saying <laughs> something about you taking your son to fights or allowing your son to watch fights, shame on you people. Okay, I can, all I can tell you is my son went to the fights from UFC Ultimate Ultimate at the beginning. You know, he was at all of them, Okay. Grew up going to fights. Doesn't mean he's going to be violent. Doesn't mean he's going to do anything in you know the fight game. But fighting comes with discipline. And if you haven't figured that out, you need to go to a different podcast. I mean, just, un just understanding, John. Like, here's the thing. It's just the understanding of what is going on. That automatically teaches your children, like, they don't need to be violent. They can. No. They, can, they know they can handle themselves. And so, yeah. Anyways, like you said. We'll see ya. <laughs> we'll see ya. <laughs>